Hi, my name is EJ Massa. When I was a kid, I loved cooking hot dogs and roasting marshmallows for s'mores over an open campfire. Recently, I've seen a lot of people use these so-called smokeless solo stoves for their backyard bonfires, and I actually got one for Christmas. The solo stove bonfire, to be exact. And when I get anything that is remotely related to heat or fire, I always think, what would happen if I cook ribs on it? So I looked online if people cook on these things, and wouldn't you know it, Solo Stove sells a cast iron grill top and hub specifically for cooking on their smokeless stoves. This is not to be confused with their other product, the Solo Stove Grill, which is made for grilling using charcoal. Look, I have plenty of charcoal grills. Plenty. I'm looking to cook food over an open fire using hardwood logs. Even though I got this stove months ago, I haven't really taken it out of the box yet. Designed to enjoy. That's a good company strategy. I guess that's why I've never been successful with my products. With the tagline, designed to detest. I really should have changed that. Inside the box, you'll find a giant beer can full of goodies, including a travel bag, and my version came with the stand. Just to demonstrate on an old pallet, it is not recommended you light a fire on an old pallet. You got the stand, the stove, and a little ring on top. The travel bag is quite nice, very thick and sturdy and seemingly waterproof. Perfect to throw in your trunk to bring to an outdoor party or campsite. Next we have the cooking hub. It's very sturdy feeling, made out of very nice stainless steel. Then there's the giant cast iron grill. The box was delivered during a rainstorm, so I was worried it would have rust on the grate, but no, the grate is beautiful. Not a hint of rust on the seasoning. That's a nice piece of iron. The hub rests on top of the stove in place of the ring, and the grate rests perfectly on that. You can see on the bottom of the grate there's these little notches so it fits perfectly on the hub and won't slide around. Now there's other accessories you can get for this hub, like a wok or a griddle, but I thought I'd start with a grill grate because it felt more on brand to me. Searing meat is like breathing water. <laughs> breathing air. <laughs> not water, you stupid. I'm not a fishman. If you turn that hub around, it does fit inside the solo stove, and then you can cover it up using this solo stove cover. I actually bought this extra, which is different from the travel bag. This is meant to be draped over the stove like a grill cover. <laughs> to store the grill grate, I actually have to hang this on a nail in my garage because it's huge. I'll take this pit on its maiden voyage, which begins by building a fire. I gathered some dry twigs and set them ablaze. Once the fire got going, I put logs on top. This is some kind of hardwood, I'm not exactly sure what kind. The dry twigs ignited the logs and soon I had a roaring fire. And while it's called a smokeless fire pit, there is still some smoke. I mean, it's still a fire. It is a very pleasant and fun burning experience and I can't wait to make s'mores with my kids this summer. For cooking, the goal is to have the wood burn down to hot embers. And once it burns down sufficiently to my liking, it's time to get the pit ready for cooking. The grill grate I first washed with water just to make sure there wasn't any residual factory dirt on it, and then I covered it with a cooking oil. I'm using olive oil here, but you can use vegetable oil or something like that. Many people recommend flaxseed oil for seasoning because it's got a low smoke point, so you can build up layers of seasoning quickly. My first cook will be these flat iron steaks I got from my local butcher. They oxidized quickly for some reason, but they smell good, so I'm gonna eat them. I season them simply with my all-purpose rub, which is basically just salt, pepper, and garlic powder. I have actually never had this cut of steak before, so I'm looking forward to it. it seemed tender with great marbling. Even though there's pepper in the rub, I felt like grinding some more on there. It was feeling peppery. I don't need that ring on top, so I took it off with tongs. Then on goes the hub, then my oiled up grill grate. I hope you've noticed I fully embraced my dad persona by always wearing puffy lawn mowing shoes and athletic shorts. So please enjoy my beautiful, exposed hairy legs. Refrain from smooching the screen too much. Once the grate has heated up, I put on the steak. After a few minutes, I flipped the steaks, and the grate made very bold and beautiful grill marks. Nothing beats the smell of seared beef mingling with the aroma of a campfire. It's a really fun experience, and I think it activates some ancient impulse from back when we build campfires and cook food over them, you know, back when we were cavemen or something. In any case, I flip them over every few minutes and check the temp using a quick read thermometer to shoot for around 130 degrees Fahrenheit or medium rare. And once it achieves that temp, I took it off the heat and let it rest on my cutting board for a few minutes while I sipped my whiskey. 
cutting into it, and man, that's a juicy steak. So we'll see if there's any benefit to cooking a steak over a wood fire like that. Or my hair is a, a mess because it's super hot out. Nothing like building a fire on one of the hottest days so far. Uh, let's have a taste. Mmm. So it's not overpoweringly smoky. It does taste more, for lack of a better word, woody. <laughs> it's, um, it's like not like a charcoal taste. It's more like the full flavor of wood. And it's really pleasant. It's, it's different. But this is really, really fun. And that this steak is so juicy. It's like dripping with juice. It's beefy. I know everyone says, oh, it's so beefy when in, in these videos. But it's true. It's beefy. It's a novelty for sure. It's like if you already have a bonfire going, you're sitting, you're chatting, you'd be like, hey, guess what? I'm going to put some steaks on this and we're going to cook them and we're going to eat them. And they're going to be tasty and they're going to be unique. Nobody, you know, nobody's going to be like, I've had steaks like this before at the Outback Steakhouse. No, no, they're not. It's going to be unique. In addition to the steak, I also made some amazing roasted veggies on there, and they turned out perfect. One good thing about this setup is if you're doing a longer cook, the openings are big enough to put more wood in there if necessary. The flat iron cut was awesome, so tender and juicy. I'll definitely get more of it in the future. Excuse me, I'm getting a phone call. What would happen if you cook ribs on it? Great point. Great point. I toyed with the idea of cooking the ribs from start to finish over the fire, but that would require me to be over that fire on a hot day, flipping the ribs, basting them every few minutes for at least an hour, maybe more. And as a dad with two kids under five, I just don't have any time. First of all, I don't have time. Honestly, I just don't have the time. There doesn't exist enough time in the year. And what happened was that we ran out of time. I don't think I have time to do that. There wasn't really time. I don't have that kind of time. I didn't have time. Basically, I wish we could have more time. I don't really have the time. To so yeah, yeah, no time. So I'll do it a different way. That's where cheating with sous vide will rescue me. I have some nice meaty baby back ribs for my local butcher, which I cut in half and seasoned with just salt and pepper, nothing else. Vacuum sealed those before putting them in the water bath at 165 degrees Fahrenheit for 12 hours. The great thing about sous vide over cooking them directly over the fire is that I'll get that tender texture that my family likes, because in the end of the day, they're gonna eat this for dinner and I have to make it to their tastes. If I skip the sous vide and cooked it over an open fire, it'll probably turn out more pork choppy and steak-like. I'm still gonna make a Texas style mop sauce though, so this recipe is modified from a recipe from Meathead's book, which I highly recommend. For the mop sauce, I added in butter to a saucepan, sauteed a chopped onion in that melted butter, added in chopped green pepper, and four cloves of minced garlic, along with a spice mixture with the following spices. Sauteed that for a few minutes, especially to bloom those dry spices. Then I added in a liquid slurry containing the following ingredients. The recipe calls for one cup of lager, but I substitute that with a dry white wine. Then I added two teaspoons of sriracha sauce to zest it up a little. Mixed it all up and simmered it for about 15 minutes. I pulled the ribs out of the water and dumped some of that mop sauce on it. I prepared the pit exactly as before. Excuse me, excuse me, eyes up here, buddy. And while you're at it, hit the music. Feel free to paint the sauce on before, after, and, and dunk the ribs in it. Just use the sauce everywhere. It's okay. It's tangy, it's sweet, it's tender. The best part is it has a great little kick to it. And you get a little bit of that wood smoke. So that's the verdict on the ribs, but is it worth it to get this hub and cooking surface for your solo stove? Like I said, I do think it's more of a gimmick than a necessity. But to be fair, it's a very fun gimmick. 
And maybe it's worth it to you. If you're entertaining and you find yourself making a bonfire often, then afterwards you can take the hub off and roast some marshmallows with your kids or other adults. I'm not judging. I think this could be a very fun experience. It's well made, it's sturdy, and will most likely last you a lifetime or two. It's a bit pricey, but Solo Stove often has sales going on, so make sure if you do buy, it's during one of those sales periods. Hello? Okay, that's all I have to say for now. Until next time, bye. Can you say that to the audience? Can you say that? Hmm, wrong number.